Exercise 2, Track 2, London Lecture Number 4, Evening, 6th August, Hampstead Hall. Ahaitu ki apradi hata, gayat maashu prasid, atma means this body, Atma means this mind, and Atma means also the soul. So, Jaya Atma Sam to satisfy the Atma. It means for satisfaction of the body, for satisfaction of the mind and for satisfaction of the soul. We are situated in three strata covering, just like you all, ladies and gentlemen, you are covered by the sad coat. Similarly, you as spirit soul is covered by two layers. The first layer is very subtle, mind, intelligence and ego. And the second layer is these five gross material elements, earth, water, air, fire, like that. So, but all of them, in one sense, they are one, because uh, it is created on the basis of ātmā. Just like our body, your body, my body, anyone's body, cat's body, dog's body, <coughs> These bodies are developed on the basis of the spirit soul. After sexual intercourse of the man and the woman, there is an emancipation of the secretion, and they form into a material body just like a pea. And the ātmā, the spirit soul, takes shelter within that pea, and therefore it develops. Gradually in the embryo it develops, then there are uh, different holes, nine holes, and that holds different, they develop two eyes, two ears, one mouth, one rectum, one genital, one navel, in this way. <coughs> so the spirit soul is covered by this matter. The first layer is called subtle, sukshma. Mana buddhi ahankar, mind, intelligence, and ego. Now we are under the false ego. Uh, exactly, if you have got a nice dress, you become very proud that I have got this very nice, costly dress. But you are actually not the dress. That is misunderstood. If you have got a nice car, Rolls Royce car, if you sit on it, you feel very proud. Oh. So this misidentification is called māyā. <coughs> the Bhagavad says that 
Everyone is trying to be happy according to different layers of consciousness. One who is one man is smoking, stop. <clears throat> one man who is under bodily consciousness, consciousness that I am this body, I am American, I am Indian, I am man, I am woman. This is bodily consciousness. He is trying to be happy in a different way. They are called karmis. Another person who is little advanced, thinking that I am mind, intelligence, or ego, taking part in nice philosophy, poetry, ideas, they are identifying with the subtle body, mind, intelligence, and ego. But there are other persons who are far advanced. They are identifying with the soul, and actually we are that. Unless we come to the platform of identifying ourselves with the spirit soul, our existence is impure. Uh, <coughs> Therefore, in our Vedic literature, the idea is to uh, understand his real constitutional position, which is called atma jnana or self-realization. So uh, the authorities, they say, parābhavastāvat abodhyāta. Abodhyāta means everyone is born ignorant, fool, anyone, even human being because he does not know what he is. He is under the bodily concept of life, just like animal. Therefore, he is called abodha jata Abodha means no knowledge. And jata means born. Ah. <coughs> so the Vedic literature indicates that a person born full, rascal, abodha jata uh, If he go on acting on that platform, that foolish platform, foolish platform means identifying oneself either with the body or with the subtle body, mind, intelligence, and ego. <coughs> So Vedic literature indicates parabhava. Parabhava means defeat. Everyone is trying to be victorious. Everyone is trying, uh, working so hard day and night. Why? He has got some idea and he wants to become victorious, either individually or uh, sociologically, or uh, commun community-wise, or nation-wise, or uh, international-wise, they, they are trying to be victorious. Uh, there is a, uh, I mean, see, impetus to become situated on the highest platform. Uh, so therefore there everyone is trying, never mind in what status of life he is. Everyone is trying to become victorious. But Bhagavad Vedic literature say, says that you are trying to be victorious, that is all right, that is your nature. 
but you are being defeated. Therefore, there is frustration. Either the karmis or the jnanis or the yogis, they are meeting with frustration. I shall uh, let you know one very nice example. Our great leader in India, in the later days, he was so much disgusted because he wanted Hindu-Muslim unity. But the result was that Muslim partisan made a partition and they took away the Pakistan. Oh. He wanted non-violence, but oh, actually there are so many violences in the Hindu-Muslim riots during the last days of the British Empire. Uh, there was furious Hindu-Muslim riot all over India. So his philosophy of non-violence was frustrated. His philosophy of uniting the Hindus and Muslims, keep one India, that was also frustrated. So we read in the papers that on the very day, morning, <coughs> When he was killed, he was speaking to his secretary, I am very much disgusted, I don't want to leave anymore. And in the evening he was killed. So this is an example. Who can be better for me and sincere worker for the country, for the society? Uh, but he was prostrate. You can take many examples in your European countries, Hitler, Napoleon, they are all prostrated. So, but everyone is trying to be very satisfied with the idea of his program. And the process he has accepted, you can take it as dharma. Just like the nationalists, they are taking dharma as country's advancement. This is dharma. And somebody is manufacturing another dharma. Somebody is manufacturing another dharma. Dharma means occupational duty. But Bhagavad says, Savai Pumsa Paro Dharma. That is first class Dharma occupation. Jato Bhakti Radho Khaji. By which you can advance in your love for God. That is first class. Everyone is advancing either for his love to the country or to the society or to the nation, or to the humanity. There are different stages of dharma. But Bhagavad says that is first-class occupation by which one can advance his love for God. Jato bhakti adhokhaja. Adhokhaja, another name of God. Akhaja means experimental knowledge. And adha, adha krita, where experimental knowledge cannot reach, that is God. We cannot understand God by our senses, by seeing or by hearing or by tasting or by touching or by going. No. That is not possible. Other Sri Krishna Namadi Navavid Gayam Indriya. You cannot perceive God or His holy name, Nam, Namadi. 
because first of all I hear the name of God. Either you call Krishna or you call Jehovah or you call something else. So we hear first of all about God by the name. In every living earth, they have got a particular type of name. Uh, <clears throat> but by our these senses, we cannot understand God even by hearing His name. Atha Sri Krishna Namadi na bhavet grahyam indriya. This indriya, these senses, therefore His name is Adhokharya, where experimental knowledge of perception fails. He is called Adhokharya. But we have to render service to the Adhokharya. Jatva bhakti Adhokharya. Ahoituki. Ahoituki means without any motive. We go to church and temple with some motive for some material compensation. God give me this, God give me this, God give me that. But without motive. Uh, if we execute our dharma, our occupational duty, uh, for attainment of the highest perfection of life, love of God, then it should be done without any motive. Ahoy to ki, aprutihata. If it is without any motive, then it will never be checked by any material condition. It is not that a poor man cannot realize God. Only the rich man can realize God. Neither it is that a rich man cannot realize God, only the poor man can. Uh, it is neither that a learned man can understand God by his philosophical speculation, and an uh, uh, illiterate man who has no knowledge, he cannot understand God. Uh, in other words, perception of God, realization of God, love of God is not dependent on any material condition. Ahoy to ki apratihata. If we can prosecute in that way our religious principle, that is first class. This is the definition of first-class religion. The religion's motive should be only realization of God, not any other thing. Ah. Just like according to Vedic process, the person in the lowest stage of life on the material platform, ah, they are first of all induced to take to religion, dharma, and they are induced to take religion for material problem, artha, dharma, artha. Uh, why artha, uh, dharma, artha, kama? Kama means for sense gratification. Uh, we take to religion for some material profit. And why you want material profit? Because without material profit we cannot enjoy our senses. Dharma, artha, kama. And when we fail, when we become frustrated, because anyone who is on the material platform executing some type of religion with a motive, he will be frustrated. Just like one of my god brothers said, Germany, during the last uh, world war, uh, all men went to the uh, active field for fighting, and their sister, their mother, their wife, they went to the church praying, uh, please get our uh, men, my father, my husband, or my brother, return. 
peacefully or without being injured. But all of them, they died. Then these women became frustrated and later on they became atheists. Ah, there is no God. We prayed so much for our husband, for our brother, but they did not come. So therefore, if we approach God with a motive, and if we are frustrated, then we become atheists. Many men, ah, just like our, in India, the policies that ah, the leaders' policy is they think that by too much attention to religion our country is fallen. We must have economic development and get out all this religious sentiment. Ah. Or they say that if you want economic development, why you are going to temple for praying, take to technology? So the danger is as soon as we go approach God with a motive, and if you are frustrated, naturally you will be frustrated, but cannot, you cannot make God as order supply. God is not order supply. The real religion is we shall execute the order of God. That is it. Don't make God your order supply. God will give me this, God will give me this, and if God does not give you, why God will give you? Huh? You start war, and when there is dangerous position, you go to church, pray God, please give us victory. Or did you take sanction from God before declaring the war? Uh, that is our position. So, <clears throat> so if we take, if we worship in that way, we will be frustrated. Therefore, Bhagavad says that that type of religion, which is executed simply to develop the dormant love of God. Everyone has got dormant love of God. That is natural, because we are all parts and parcels of God. Uh, just like you are part and parcel of your parents, you have got some natural affection for parents, and the parents have got natural affection for the son. So similarly, we are part and parcel of God. Therefore our love for God is there in the heart, in everyone's heart. But artificially we have checked it, blocked it. Ah. So our process should be how to develop that dormant love for God. That is actually our position. Otherwise, we shall never be happy. Bhagavad says, Savai Punsu Paro Dharma, Jato Bhakti Radho Khaji, Ahoi Tati, Aprati Hata, Jayatma Sam Prasidati. That type of religious process or occupational duty, the religion is taken, the English meaning of religion as described in the dictionary, it is said that it is a kind of a faith. But according to Sanskrit etymology, the religion has a different meaning. Religion means which is your natural occupation. That is called religion. Natural. And if we study and analyze our different occupational duties, you will find that the one common factor is there which is rendering service to others. 
every one of us, either Hindu or Muslim or Christian, it doesn't matter. But everyone is engaged to render service to somebody else. Just try to understand. Uh, so our constitutional position is that we are rendering service to somebody superior. Uh, <clears throat> in a country, the president or the king or queen, uh, he is also engaged in rendering service to the nation or to the public. Uh, similarly, we are also engaged in rendering service to some office boss or to some government post. If you analyze very nicely, you will find that everyone is rendering some service to the superior. <coughs> Our, this Bhagavad philosophy says that if you are rendering service to others, some, somebody superior, you render your service to God, the Supreme, then you will be happy. Otherwise you will be frustrated. Everyone is rendering service to his family, to his nation, just like Mahatma Gandhi. He rendered best service to the nation, but the result was frustration and he was killed. This is a fair. So you can render service to your society, to your family, to your nation, or to the international activities, but unless the center point is God, all such attempts will be frustrated. That is a fact. If you do not understand now, but if you meditate on it, you will see that is the actual fact. Suppose you are rendering service to his family, to your family, uh, and at the old age, if you ask your wife, your children, whether you are satisfied. I have rendered service throughout my whole life. Now, I don't think you will get any satisfactory reply. The children will say, Father, you have not done this thing for me. The wife will say, you have not done this for me. Oh. That is a fact, because we are not serving. Our motive is sense enjoyment. I am serving a wife, or a wife is serving his husband. That neither the wife is serving the husband, neither the husband is serving wife, but everyone is serving his senses. When you go to some office, you are serving some boss. Actually, you are not serving that boss. You are serving your senses, because the boss will pay you some money, and with that money you will be able to gratify your senses. In this way, if you analyze, everyone is serving his senses. That is the material existence. And that is said in the Bhagavatam that Kamadinam Kutidhana Kutidha Palita Dunidesa. One devotee is offering his prayer to the Supreme, that I have served my kama, krodha, lust, anger, greediness, so long. Kama dinam kutidhana kutidha palita dunni desa tesan mai na koruna jata. But still, lifelong I have served them, but they are not very much pleased upon me. You go on increasing your lusty desire, serving, but they will never be satisfied. 
the lusty desire will desire, I mean to say, dictate that you go on serving like this, go on serving like this, go on serving like this. You cannot satisfy your lusty desires. Similarly, you cannot satisfy your greediness. Increase. So actually the philosophy is that you can, cannot satisfy your senses even though you give long, lifelong service to them. Tisaṁ kuruṇā nā jātā na trpā na śānti. There is no śānti, they are not pleased and they are not very much, uh, I am to say, merciful. They will never say, oh, ye have said so much. Now we return the same example. Like Gandhi, he gave so much service. The country did not say, ah, Mahatma Ji, you please return. Ah, neither he returned. He wanted to give more service. The result was that he was killed. So if we think all these matters, little cool-headed, we can understand that we are rendering service to our wings, to the senses, but we are never satisfied. Oh, that cannot be. Therefore at the end, dharma, artha, kam, moksha. Oh, first of all, people take to religion for some economic profit, and they want economic profit for sense gratification, dharma, artha, kama. And when they are dissatisfied or frustrated in the process of sense gratification, they want moksha. Moksha means liberation or become one with the Supreme. That is called moksha. Or nirvan. The nirvan philosophy, Buddhist philosophy, and this material existence, dismantle this combination of matter. Then there is nothing. Vidha Buddha philosophy is that we have got this body, combination of material elements, gross and subtle. Therefore, there is feelings of pains and pleasure. And if you dismantle this, let the earth go to the earth, let the water go to the water, because this is a combination of earth, water, fire, air. So we dismantle it and distribute it. Then there is no body and there is no feelings of pain and pain. That is nibbāna philosophy. Uh, but the Vedānta philosophy says that this is external. This material body is external. Uh, jagat, material, mithya, this combination is for the time being, but there is soul, brahma, brahma sattva, jagat mithya, they are after brahma. Uh, the person who is trying to make this existence void, they are called voidists. Uh, voidists means sunnavadi make everything zero. There are many philosophers. They write volumes of books to prove everything zero. That is called Sunnavadi. And there are other philosophers. They say that there is Brahma, the absolute truth, but he is impersonal. Ah, he is not a person. Those, these two classes of philosophy going on, very, uh, I mean, say, prominent at the present moment. Uh, so here, our students, we are singing, Nidvisesa Sunnabadi, Paschato Desatarin. There are two classes of philosophers, Nidvisesa, impersonalist, and the Vaidhis. The whole Western world is full of all these philosophers. Uh, now, 
you are giving something which is beyond this impersonal idea and void is the idea. <coughs> so uh, you try to understand this Krishna consciousness philosophy. Uh, this impersonalist philosophy or the voidist philosophy will not give you any solace after being frustrated. Everyone is frustrated, but they are trying to take some solace from certain type of philosophy. But here yes, Srimad Bhagavad says that you can be pleased, you can be satisfied when you know the personal feature of the Absolute Truth and you render service unto Him, then you will be satisfied. Otherwise not. Jaya Atma Suprasidati. You cannot render service to anyone in the void or something impersonal. You cannot love something. You do not love a sky. A sky is very big. But you love a small child. Why? Why not the sky? Why don't you render your service and love to sky? It is very big. Ah. But why you are rendering service to a child? Ah. The child is passing stool immediately, you take care of it and doing the work of a sweeper and uh, she is crying, uh, you taking care of why? Why not serve the big? No. You cannot have affection without person. That is the main part. You cannot love the sky, but you can love a small child because it is person. Similarly, if you want to love God, you cannot love God in His impersonal feature. Neither you can love God in His other features. You have to love God as He is. In the Bhagavad Gita, it is said that Maya Tatamadam Sarvam Abhaktam Uttina. I am spread everywhere. Ah, abhakta, impersonal, non manifested form. Maya tatavidam sarvam jagat abhakta murtina. Masani sarvabhutani. Everything is resting on me. Naham tesu avasthita. But I am not there. So, this philosophy is very interesting. If you want to understand this Krishna consciousness philosophy, we have got many books. Oh, I am talking with only one book and only one or two lines. So it's, this is Srimad Bhagavatam. So if you study scrutinizingly, word to word, Srimad Bhagavatam, you will get philosophical understanding of the Absolute Truth in details. Srimad Bhagavatam Avalam Puranam Vidya Bhagavatavati Your learning will be tested if you can understand Srimad Bhagavatam. There are 18,000 verses in the Srimad Bhagavatam. Each line, each word, is so much impregnated with thoughts that you can think over them lifelong. But the result will be that you will become God conscious, Krishna conscious. And you will know more and more about God. Simply knowing God is great is not sufficient. It is very good to accept God. The atheists, they do not accept God. But anyone who is accepting God, he is described as very fortunate. So, 
not only accept God, but also inquire more and more about God. If, if you cannot think of God immediately, the Bhagavad, Bhagavad Gita gives you direction how you can realize God step by step. Just like Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, Rasoham Apsukam Teya, my dear Arjun, I am the taste of the water. Now you are drinking water every day, many times, and quench your thirst. If you think, meditate on the water only, the Krishna says, I am the taste of the water, you become a great philosopher and lover of God. Simply by tasting water. You do not require to see Krishna. You just think over the matter which you are using daily. You will come to Krishna God. Why Krishna says that I am the taste of the water? Another place he says that Prabhasmi Sasi Surja. I am the sun sign. I am the moon sign. Then you think over how Krishna becomes sun sign. If you are philosophical mind, mind, you'll find Krishna. Now sun sign, everyone knows, everyone sees. So what is the sun sign? The effulgence of the sun glow. Now whether the sun glow is important, or the sun sign is important. You can think of it. You will find the sun globe is important because the sun sign is emanating from the sun globe. Then, what is more important than the sun globe? If you have power to penetrate still further within the sun globe, you will find there is a god, a demigod whose name is Vivasyan, and he is the Supreme Personality in the Sam Guru. This is one of the sons, but there are millions and trillions of sons. The science also accepts it. Not only one son. They just imagine who manufactured all these sons. You go further. A Krishna says, Aham. Ah, matta sarvam pravartate aham sarvasya prabhava. So in this way, if you are actually philosophically inclined, you can find out Krishna by studying Bhagavad Gita. Ah. So our, this uh, Krishna consciousness movement is to educate people, to awake him to Krishna consciousness, as it is said, Jayatma Samprasidati, by awakening Krishna consciousness, he will be happy, his body will be happy, his mind will be happy, and his soul he will be happy. And for example, you can see, example is better than precept. We have started this movement only for the four or five years, and we are getting the flowers of every country, young boys and girls, they are coming to Krishna consciousness. So do not think that this movement is a bogus movement or a sentimental movement. We have got solid philosophy behind this movement. If you are able to study, come forward. That is our request. So, thank you very much for giving us so much time. But I request you to understand this movement and be happy. Thank you. Thank you.